Hi and welcome back to the channel. In this video we'll be taking a look at something different than our normal tactical analysis. We will actually be taking a look at why there may be so many inconsistencies in our performances and how Xavi is actually affecting that. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, please make sure that you do subscribe for more tactical content. Let's get right down to the video. In the match against Real Madrid in the Super Cup final, we had our normal back three that was there not only to have defensive cover, but also to exploit this wide regions of Real Madrid. We also had our normal double pivot consisting of Sergio Busquets and Frank Dio to not only have control and overload the midfield, but also for some more defensive cover. We also had the likes of Gavi and Pedri, which was specifically there to have a four-man midfield in the free eight role and to control Real Madrid better. But against Getafe, this was not evident. As we can also see that Barcelona in a normal shape in this game against Real Madrid, we had our back three, which was very, very wide and very deep as well to and actually to have our Sergio Busquets and Frankie de Jong to operate a little bit more in the midfield region. We also had Robert Lewandowski coming into midfield in order to play like a false nine role where he would even overload the midfield more to have five players centrally. But in this game against Getafe, Barcelona actually was allowed to come through the building phase relatively easy. But in this case, Barcelona didn't have any central advantage, actually only three against the four-man midfield that Getafe had while Sergio Busquets was also being marked, although he had a man of the match performance. Like here you can see Barcelona's shape. Barcelona had their normal centre-backs with a two-pairing, no three-man uh, centre-back in this case, where they also had Sergio Busquets as the sole pivot, which often he was marked and Barcelona was having trouble to build up and play through centrally. You also had Gavi and Pedri ahead of Sergio Busquets in the free aid role, but that didn't do anything as Barcelona didn't have the likes of Robert Lewandowski who could actually pull the midfielders centrally and Barcelona also had their normal wingers out wide. Getafe was never going to press. Instead, Xavi should have known that they were just going to sit in the middle of the park trying to close down the midfield of FC Barcelona. And he did an alter his tactics and this is why Barcelona was looking like they were struggling. Look at Andreas Christensen dribbling forward with the ball. But at the same time, Getafe was playing so narrow that he couldn't find any penetrative passes into midfield into the likes of Pedri, Gavi and Ansu Fati. This is a real problem because if Getafe was clever enough, they would actually sit back and actually try to press Andreas Christensen to try and get the ball off of him and Barcelona would have been in big, big, big trouble. We can also see in this scenario right here, Pedri had to start dropping uh, between Kunde and Sergio Roberto to get on the ball as they were closed down and Ansu Fati falls nine as well which drew a lot of players from the five men backline that Getafe actually had. This was making Barcelona very vulnerable. But Javi did try to have Sergio Roberto run in between the left centre back and the wing back in order to keep Gavi on the other side to, so that he doesn't have to come over as well. And this is all the problems that Barcelona had. I can guarantee you if we had a double pivot, Barcelona would have played with a five men central along with Gavi Pedri, Busquets and Frankie de Jong also with Ansu Fati. And then central progression and central passing would have opened up for Barcelona with the intricate passes and the likes of Ansu Fati and Gavi could have really made runs in behind like we did against Real Madrid. But the problem here was Xavi did alter his tactics and totally broke the flow and rhythm. We did see he tried Sergio Roberto to go into midfield to be an extra man and suddenly Gavi and Pedri and Ousmane Dembele and Alejandro Balde started finding spaces in between the lines and at the back as well. We also see spaces starting to open up for Barcelona with Kunde starting to find himself in acres of space wherever he would be and Christensen as well. And this is what Xavi should have done to keep the tactics the same but just different personnel. At the start of the second half, it did look as Jordi Alba was playing as a third centre back because Gavi actually started to inverting a whole lot and Rafinha was out on the left so he didn't have to go for it. Sergio Roberto started advancing more but it would have been better for him to be actually a little bit more central in order to keep them even more to give Usman and Dembele some space out wide. This is where you saw when Gavi started to invert, Rafinha started to have lots and lots of space on the left hand side. But the thing is, when Frank Yeshe came in, you would have thought that Xavi would have him as a double pivot, along with Sergio Busquets. 
but in fact he's played up really high up the pitch in order to give Gavi the width and this had Gavi too far away from the ball which meant that Barca didn't have any control in midfield and nobody was protecting Sergio Busquets. Ansu Fati played the false nine role but Kessier didn't run in behind the space that was left by Fati in order to get at the end of the ball and actually influence the game from there. And this is what I said about having your tactics together and your systems. Here you can see of Kessie's position where in actuality he should have been a little bit more closer. But you can see here Gavi is totally out of play, somebody that you would want on the ball. But now the thing is, in my opinion, Kessie should have been a lot closer to the ball, a lot more closer to Sergio Busquets as well, sort of in a position round about here where the ball would actually come. And this is making switching play very difficult as well. If he was in that position, he would have received the ball from Sergio Roberto. He would have then had Gavi inverting, totally going, keeping everybody narrow, where Jordi Alba would actually keeping the width as well, where Barcelona could actually attack the ball in behind. You can see Gessi is positioning again along with Gavi, but Ansu Fati is making the run, players is following him. But the problem here is look at Jordi Alba's positioning. He's not really doing anything, he's not influencing play, he's not in a position to receive the ball from Fati as well. But talking about Fati, look at his positioning, actually playing the false nine where Kessie should have actually run in behind him, the space that was left, but nobody is there to actually run in behind and actually orchestrating the play. It's confusing and this is what is breaking the rhythm of FC Barcelona and Xavi needs to realize this as well. However, I just want to add that this is not me coming for Xavi. It is just that I just want to make things clear and make you guys understand what I'm talking about. And also, this was great uh, individual performance from Ter Stegen and Sergio Busquets as well. But things could have been a lot better for FC Barcelona if we just had our tactics that we had against Real Madrid. And Xavi need to realize that changing things around is going to break the rhythm of your team. But that's all from our side today. I hope you guys understood everything I was talking about. Congratulations to Sergio Busquets for 700 games. He really deserves it. Thank you very much for watching. Goodbye.